Hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only one. You can read by my shirt. I'm Hobo Tom. I'm here to talk about some wrestling, and I have good news for a change. Well, maybe good news. I, I hope. NXT is coming back to Daytona Beach. Yes, yes, yes. See, so I put in my little calendar book, master book with everything. Oh wait, that was Wednesday. I did everything I was supposed to do Wednesday. Actually, I did everything with this video. Everything I was supposed to do today. So NXT is coming back to Daytona Beach, March 14th. Ooh, that's during Lent. I hope I work the early shift that day. Because even if I have to wear my wrestling shirt underneath, I want to go. I want to provide you, my viewing audience, some of the best... Um, no. I want to provide you, my viewing audience, the more interesting parts of pro wrestling. Sometimes it's not the best. Sometimes... Again, this will be interesting because it's been about five months especially since NXT has been on the USA Network. It'll be interesting to see what kind of product they put out there for the live show. So that should be interesting. <clears throat> so that's a little note. But whoa! It is Thursday. I do apologize for getting, getting the show late. Late! But for some reason, YouTube hasn't been up for most of the day. And that's not good. That's my wrestling. I know they have to be back by August. Oh, in my Triple Mania. I will request to work that Friday morning just to catch Triple Mania. And literally to have a Triple Mania party. That would be cool. Uh, but wait a second. That's, that's months off. I have to get off my suspension first. And then about two more months. Uh, I think I finally learned my lesson, folks. Actually, they sent me that another video got pulled. That's weird. Like, a month after. Oh, well, nothing I can do about that. Mine didn't pull only in Japan. Now it's like, all over the world. I know I have one video banned in Japan. And I think I have a couple other videos banned in like 20 countries. Not necessarily for being bad, but just for doing stuff I probably should not have been doing. But I've learned. Only Triple Mania. It's the full hobo experience. But let's not talk about that anymore. Let's talk about some AEW Dynamite. Uh, starts off pretty hot. Uh, John Mossy comes out. Uh, he's going to take on Ortiz from the Pride, from the Proud and the Powerful. Wow. Mossy, you can just beat people up. Ortiz. And Ortiz is like cross between Tamatango and Yano. Only because he distracts the refs, and then Hernandez gets involved. Hernandez holds Mox's foot so Ortiz can do his move. Again, smart tag team stuff. Remember, Ortiz is a tag team specialist. He's not, it has been a long time since he's had a singles match. I don't think he's ever had a singles match in AEW. I don't even think about it. You'd have to go back maybe to his impact days. Yeah. I think you actually have to go back to when he was in impact a long time ago. I do apologize for missing impact. I'm going to give kind of a whole schedule about next week. Because next week sucks for me. But I'll get to that later. Um, again, I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the steps. Cuckoo, cuckoo! Wow, they love to abuse that barricade. I tell you what, you're at an AEW show, you sit in that front row. You might take a wrestler home with you. Uh, Ortiz, he does again that kind of planking headbutt, which is awesome. Uh, he, you know, the pop up power bomb. Then Moxley uses a figure four. Whoa. He can do more than just barbed wire stuff. And Jericho, Chris Jericho, is the absolute best announcer. In 10 years, when the WWE needs a new announcer, they need Jericho and Taz. Oh, that would be so good. 
Yeah, that would be. And they should bring back Matt Stryker. Oh. Fantasy stuff. Talking about fantasies. I have to do a lot this week about fantasies. I have to make my princess, Kimberly. Uh, again, I'll get to that later. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Oh, wow, I'm so far behind in stuff. Whoever imagined I'd be this busy after being released? But I am. And then that job starts up in March. Yep, because I just filled out that paperwork. I have two other jobs to apply for. I'm going to do that tomorrow, I hope. Tomorrow. So busy. I'm trying to convince my... Oh, I have to get breakfast tomorrow, too. Yeah, I'll figure out something tomorrow. That's my own personal issues. You don't need to know my own personal issues. It's Thursday night. I'm waiting to have my beer ration because this storm of the winter is coming. Freaking 80 degrees today in Florida in February. Jeez, I'm used to like six feet of snow. I miss snow. I wish. Yeah, whatever. Oh, wait, where was I? Oh, yeah. And then, of course, there was a dive onto Hernandez. Um, then Moxie just goes after everyone. Ortiz goes over the barricade. Or Ortiz does a somersault dive and a fisherman suplex. I do like seeing the perfect flex. But there was always, as always, the heel miscue between Ortiz and Hernandez. That led to Ortiz being paradigm shifted. Yeah, that's what he calls it in the AEW. And then, just to prove the point, Hernandez comes in the ring trying to save his tag team partner. Moxley produces the keys to the car, the $70,000 Mustang GT, and stabs, for lack of a better term, stabs Hernandez right in the eye. Yep. Eye for an eye, folks. Wage, well, I guess, should be in pro wrestling. Although, for some reason, you can always solve an assault case, adultery case, rape case, murder case by trial by combat in a wrestling ring. Who knew? Uh, with that, so that was pretty cool. That whole match, that was amazing. AEW, that's amazing. Starts off with a surf and turf match. Oh, also, oh, I'll get to that. The 24th, you can hear me live. I'll be on the Kevin Scampoli show. Raw's fifth hour. I do plan to call in. Say, what's up? Or give my opinion about stuff. Say, I don't know. I really can't Wednesday. Monday. I don't know. It all depends on when I can cut stuff. It all depends if YouTube's working. I hope that was like the like the beginning of the month like hiccup. I think it, I think you know what I think this happened last month too. So hey, once a month they have to update stuff. I'm cool with that as long as I can get my SmackDown tomorrow night. We're all good. I'll find out tomorrow morning. Actually, about eight and a half hours from now. So then we have the best friends taking on. So again, that match between Moxie and Ortiz, that was a surf and turf match. Taking on SCU. I like saying that. I like SCU. We are the best. SCU. This is fun. Then they mentioned they mentioned Two Cold Scorpio. I remember when it was Two Gold Scorpio back in ECW. So great to hear old names like that come up. Jared, I think, doesn't care about like anything but talking about old stuff, which is pretty cool. And Tony Schiavone is so good. He's so smooth. Excalibur. Oh, he's good. He is beginning to get close to that Mauro Rolando line. Because Chairs is like, yep, just call Excalibur. Suicide Cornito. Oh, Cornito Suicide. Uh, uh, Cornito. Uh, tope Cornhilo. Tope Suicido. He hasn't come. He hasn't busted out the one saving grace. Oh, the one saving grace about Excalibur is that he hasn't busted out all these pop culture references. Once, 
I mean, he, I forget, I think the last time he said something like that, honestly, was the pay per view I got banned from. That was June? No? When was it? August. Yeah, it had to be in August. So let's see here. September, October, November, December, January. That's about the right amount of pop culture references. Good job, Excalibur. Yeah, I don't need the, I'm I'm totally turned off by NXT watching it. Mauro Ronaldo killed it for me. Not my cup of tea. Um what else was there? Oh, Scorpio Skies. Again, the double teams by best friends. This is the way a tag team should be. You have two people, they have 10 seconds, they beat up the guy, they do their moves. I like it. I like old school double teams. The best friend Scorpio Sky is, is, is amazing. Uh, yes, a good counter. Like knee joint bend into the headlock. That's classic joint manipulation and counter wrestling. When I see that stuff, man, I could watch that stuff. All day. Then again, you start flying. Again, the draping scissors leg drop by Caesarian. By Caesarian. Wow, Caesarian has a surgical procedure for, for pregnancy, also known as a C-section. Caesarian is different from Caesarian. Uh, Scorpio Sky again has a cutter. Trent speared. Then they all go to the outside. Wow, I've never seen so much wrestling on the outside. And those chop. Woo! Then they have the yay boots going on. And I might even have a guest actually for Triple Mania. I hope. I might have a couple of guests for Triple Mania. I might have a Triple Mania party. We'll see an all the taco bar. I'll figure something out. The yay boots. Again, the, the teasing of the suplexes was great. Then. The tease of the soul food. And ironically enough, I forget who won. I think. Oh, yeah. Best. Oh, yeah. SC. SC. You won. I took that. But that, that doesn't mean anything, though, folks. Well, we have, we have the Dark Order coming out. And. Oh, wait. Maybe the Best Friends won. I forget. Whatever it was, it was a really fun match, though. Actually, I think the best friends won. Best friends won. I'll say that. I honestly forget. It's actually not in my notes. Normally, I circle who wins and loses for some reason. I forgot. I might have been doing stuff, dealing with Woo stuff. Doesn't matter. The Dark Order came out. Orange Cassidy has two spots. One, everyone was laying down on the mat. Orange Cassidy with his hands in the pockets. Well, right on. He went to take a nap. Got a be waking up by Chuck Taylor, I think. When the Dark Order, they try to recruit Orange Cassidy. Evil Uno hands him the mask, but he puts his hands up and then puts his hands back in his pants, and he gets beat up for his efforts. And then Christopher Daniels, the person they really want, comes out. I'll tell you what, this whole match, everything about that, that was a fun, again, surf and turf match. You know I'm having way too much fun, and I enjoyed the show because I'm forgetting my breaks. Then we had an MJF promo. That was good. And, oh, God almighty. Oh, I, oh just, uh, just sent her to NXT. Sent her to NXT to, to be with. I, 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 can't, I can't even be enthused about this. Sent her to NXT to be with Adam Cole, baby. But, wow, Britt Baker. Like, they told her to be a heel dentist. Uh, wow. Uh, then it was Britt Baker versus Yuki. Sakuzai. I said that right. Most part, it started off with a classical match. It was pretty good. Uh, Britt Baker was working over the neck and jaw region. Made sense. There were just some... God, Britt is terrible. <laughs> Actually, I wrote that down. Uh, a UK flies, which is smart. He does a sit down senton. 
If you're going to be the lighter, more agile person, you have to be running around more. You just can't be there and trade blows. You can to a certain degree. And th th thank you, Yuki, for making the match watchable because God knows Baker doesn't. Uh, Britt did some hair pulling. Yeah, the referee says, no, you cannot do that. And then Yuki won by a crucifix roll-up. It was an interesting way. It's, it's like actually doing a La Mahistra, except for it's a, cruci it's a crucifix position. It's probably a legitimate pen. It's not like a surprise roll-up from behind. <clears throat> you actually get There's actually a whole setup to it. So it makes it much more realistic. So the crucifix roll up. And Yuki Sakazawi wins the match. But oh god, it's 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 Britt Baker though. She ah, the whole women's division. And Yuki so freaking tiny. I don't think both women I know they give their weights, but I don't think both women would like in the ring was 100 pounds. And Jay, he just doesn't care. He could care less. They were talking about Britt Baker's fat boyfriend. I don't know who they're talking about. I'm a fat bastard, folks. I'll clearly say that. Adam Gold, baby! That's not a fat person. Actually, pretty skinny. Might be skinny fat. But he's not fat. He's not a fat bastard. Or a fat piece of FPOF. He wears rib tape all the time. Like Diamond Dallas Page. So, I don't know. JR just like could care less. He's so condescending. And in this match, it really came through. I'll tell you what, with JR and the other thing is that where I saw the ref Slip Yuki a fake tooth and blood caps. As you could tell, like the ref was like, it, like she had her mouth covered. I'll get to that in a moment. But this match was a can of soup. What happened afterward just makes me dislike Britt Baker more. It's like, just, just go home, go back to. Winter Springs, Florida, and be a dentist. You're better at that than you are being a pro wrestler. It's like, I'm better at nothing. I feel like you know. That's okay. Um, so, it's terrible when you see the referee slip something, because what happened at the end, Britt Baker was so upset. She lost, she stuck... Uh, Yuki's mouth and the ropes to the curb stomp. I don't even think that would hurt that much. That would probably lessen the blow. Because then you saw the referee, Aubrey, try to do the best she could. And by the way, that ring bell probably weighed more than Yuki. But that's a whole other issue. But I swear, uh, um, Aubrey gave her something and like right in her mouth. I'm like here, oh here's this by the way. When you can see her hands going by her hands and saying, okay, here, here, take this. Yeah, so when you can really tell nah. Nah. And the whole thing was a can of soup. Now we'll get better at this. It's just because it's late at night, and I'm kind of really watching the clock. Um, then we have the Butcher, the, the Baker, the Candlestick Maker. Oh, no, no, no. The Butcher, the Blade, and the Lucha Brothers taking on Kenny Omega, Hangman, Adam Page, and the Young Bucks. Uh, Page starts off. Page is great. I love the fact that he's like drunk cowboy. And he's just like alcoholic cowboy now. I like alcoholic cowboys. I like my alcohol. Alcohol tastes good. It's very good. Uh, Page beats up the blade, and then of course he yeah, and he only tags in Kenny Omega through the entire match, which is smart on his part. Because then he tags in Omega, so Omega and Page are double team. Good stuff. Um, I can't kind of complain about anything in this match. Really, they do the uh, stomp to the arm again. Classic tag team move. 
I love classic tag team stuff. The Young Bucks kick to everyone. Hangman does his dive. And now everyone in the ring. Because that's the way it goes. Uh, well, Ray Phoenix can still, still do his flippy stuff. But so, I'm so happy to see the Lucia Brothers back again. And, and Hangman, he just... <laughs> Because the way the match started off is that, you know, they have their entrance. Hangman just kind of walks out. He's like, dude, this is stuff. And then fireworks off behind him. He's like, whatever. And then everyone else comes up behind him. He's like, I don't want to be with the Young Bucks. The young Bucks want my belt. That makes sense, though. Again, the main event could have been the main event in most shows, too, which would be pretty cool. And now, after everything flies, the heels take control. McJackson does the double Mexican arm drag. I can kind of see where Jim Cornette is, where now the Young Bucks are making wrestling look a little hokey. I know it's always been choreographed, but now it's like super choreographed. Especially when Matt does the locomotion, he wears, he, and then he does the double Northern Lights Bridging Suplex. Two the Northern Lights Bridging Suplex is tough with one person, even if they are helping you along. To do it with two is just. No. It's still cool looking though. Then Ray does Ray Phoenix a Mexican arm, arm drag off. Kenny Omega. Whoa. And I don't like people like. Poo Poo Lucha, Lucha Libre. So fun. Flying stomp to the hamstring. Almost like Demon's Testify. But, oh, oh no, it was, what's up? Yes, the what's up. But again, it goes to the hamstrings. That's where Kenny Omega grabs where Devon used to do a straight flying headbutt. So another region. Not good. The hamstrings probably, actually, probably hard to work. That's like super Charlie Horsey right there. The... Butcher's amazing though. He does that hammerlock. He just he looks like some guy from like the seventies. He's amazing. He looks like he got pulled out of a barn and said, Here, this is your tag team partner. Follow his lead. It's great. Of course there was a snap suplex. The dragon Kenny Omega hit the uh, dragon snap suplex to everyone. The follow away Slam is always fun to see, especially when done by the butcher. He just picks you up, holds you there. And then the hubris comes back, and it makes sense because Paige refuses to tag in the Young Bucks. He only tags in Kenny. He makes the blind tag to the one Jackson. So hubris came in, and he actually ate the package. The, yeah, I guess that. Package Meltzer driver combo that Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. Pentagon Jr. didn't do a lot of his antics, though. So I'm really disappointed. I do like Saro Miedo. Lucha, Lucha. Still, this match was really fun, though. Again, this was the tag team divisions. Amazing. It's a surf and turf match. Wow. Hey, wrap this up. I think in eight minutes, I hope. Uh, Paige leaves by himself. He's detected. He wants to go find a bar. Pac. Bastard Pac. It's Kenny Omega. I'm going to have a match with you. And poor little Riho. All 90 pounds of Riho standing in the background. Because I've already beat up Michael Nakazawa. Who else do I have to beat up to get your attention, Kenny? And he just glares over Riho. And Riho's like, Huh? Wait, why are you staring at me? And Kenny's like, yes, 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 I'll, I'll fight you. And it's like, but Kenny, I might be a bastard, but I'm not a beast. When Nyla Rose came out, I didn't realize Nyla Rose had su such a deep voice. I've heard things about Nyla Rose. She initially wasn't. She was like, I snip, snip. But. 
snip, snip, tuck, stitch, stuff like that. And here, take a bunch of pills. But she has a pretty deep voice. So, bastard Pock, of course, is Georgian accent. Oh, I'm only a boss and I'm not a beast. So then, <laughs> Nyla Rose comes in, power bombs poor little Rio on a table. Rio's not big enough to break a table. <laughs> the table barely, like, budged backwards. Poor, poor Rio. She has to put on kissy pizza or something. Be stretched. Then the next match, probably the final match, was Kip Sabian taking on Joey Janela. And Kip Sabian, you are very close, sir, to gimmick infringement. So he had some big lollipop. And he gave some fan his gum. Wait a second. Who, who gives fans candies that they've already used and, 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 and lollipops? Joey Ryan. That's gimmick infringement, folks. I know that because I'm a hobo Tom, even though I wear the hobo, which is technically a different name. Again, you can get this at Pro Wrestling Tees. Give them the free plug because soon I'll be getting my, again, two months I'll be getting my Macho Man shirt. So let's wrap this up. Uh, it was hard hitting start. Again, you can tell that they were telling the spots. Joey No Soul, the back kick, he's kicked me again. Uh, no. He, he, this time, Kip Sabian was smart. No kicks. He went for the sleeper hold. Went to a headlock. Uh, the back slaps, which I don't understand which would do besides being annoying. And oh my god! But LP4 has such a booty! Even Tony Schiavone! So shame on you, Tony Schiavone. You're married. I can stare. At least that means I'm single. That's okay. Hey, my feet be short. If, if, if you don't like Kip Tavian, or if he gets sent back to England or Australia or wherever he's from, I'm single. But, so with that, can Ford just. Slap. He's actually a really good wrestler. There was a wreck, wrecking ball drop kick on the outside. You know, the outside interference by Penelope before, who has the most perfect booty, and I can see why Joey would miss her. I'd miss her too. There was the oh, there was the kick, the roll through, and the second kick. Triple combo. The delayed German suplex that looked amazing on the outside. The Janelle driver, but I don't. And a terrible three count. Wow, that ref has learned one, two, three. Not one, two. Oh, no, 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 no three count. So that was terrible. <laughs> and then <laughs> Kip Sabian and Penelope Preferred kissed. I swear I saw that I saw that Penelope Ford slip kept baby in the tongue. However, this led to her downfall because Joe Janela shoved Kip Sabian and her sent Penelope Ford to the ground. Joe Janela looks confused. Uh, roll up victory, I think. Yeah, whatever. And <laughs> a couple other things before I rate this match, because it was an okay match. It was a Cheeseburger match. But I think the funny thing, of course, Jerry has to use old terms. Why that, Jezebel? And Tony Schiavone's like, you know, I just noticed that Penelope Ford has blue eyes. And Jerry's like, you just noticed that? I know what you were staring at. Staring at her ass. It's like everyone else was. And her boobies. But her ass is more pronounced. And then there was an inner circle promo. The Dark Order promo! And Dustin Reynolds came out. Talked about how Cody was going to get his, 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 his whooping. He was going to get a whooping because that was the conditions. Not only is my boy Foy not smooth. 
It's the back feeling me all messed up too. I'm so proud of my little boy, Cody. I'm smiling down at him. Tell him the macho man and show the animal steal. That's my boy. You don't have a smooth forehead no more. You don't have a smooth back. And look at that hot wife you have. Oh yeah. I'm happy because he's living the American dream, baby. So this, I'll tell you what, I was I was not a fan of this. I just wanted to see him. I want to see the promo. It honestly took 20 minutes to get the 10 lashes. Not a big fan of it because they just go there. Arn Anderson should have said, here, take a bite into this. Should have given him like a pencil like wrapped in his like play sheet. Hey, Chief up. And just said, take it like a man, and then you get a piece of him in, at the pay-per-view. But instead, it was really prolonged, really drawn out. MJF, he was whiffing, too. And then Wardlow, <laughs> that was a shoot whiff. And then, at the end, of course, at 10 lashes, it was all done. MJF decided to kick him right in the nuts. It's like any good heel would. For some reason, heels like to kick people in the groin. If they were like a split cup or something, that would give heels their comeuppance. Uh, they ran up to the stage, and then they were attacked by a fan. But on closer inspection, <laughs> it was a fan who was ready to rumble. Because he had on, because that fan had on knee pads, elbow pads, and like wrestling boots. And like kick guard, and like, like shin guard. What kind of fan was that? Although, I have seen some fans come dressed up as CM Punk and like do like the whole everything. I'd like to think because just MJF and Wardlow took care of him and the security and police weren't running that. And I've heard the rumor that it was, I think Kazarian was dressed up as. Them. So, so that was okay. It is what it was. But that was AEW, folks. Overall, I'll tell you what, minus the women. Oh, yeah, that last match. Yeah, yeah I think it was like a cheeseburger match. But I'll get that in later. Editing process! But, oh, so that's AEW. And, oh, boy, I can't wait to see more of Thunder Rosa. And I got teased, and I thought it was going to be a huge Thunder Rosa thing, and it wasn't. NWA, you played me for a mark, and you changed your theme music on me, NWA. I almost want to say boo, but it was still Pantera, though. That's pretty good. Uh, starts off with a Tim Storm interview. And with that, uh, uh, Camille and Latimer come out, and they, they bring out a fake Mama Storm. That was funny, but it was just meh. Then we had Matt Cross, Son of Havoc. I look better as Son of Havoc. I didn't realize he had short hair and was balding like me. That's terrible. I looked him better in the mask. Again, I'd probably look better in the mask too. He was saying I'm Caleb Conley, a pretty good match. Again, I just like Matt Matt Cross as a Son of Havoc better. Congratulations to you. Ruby Riot. You got lucky. But it doesn't work out, Ruby Riot. Hey, how are you lovelies? I'm single, too. Uh, again, for the most part, it was a classic match. Matt Cross, when he when he channels his inner lucha, when he channels the son of havoc, he does a fast rope running again. Fast, the speed, the speed, the fast sidekick, running off ropes, jumping off ropes, springboard stuff. That's what he's best at. Again, Caleb Conley does a combo foot sweep to Senton. Still looks great. Cross again. He, faster pace favors him. He, he enjoys the lucha style, I think. And Caleb Conley's a wrestler who can keep up probably with that. I'll tell you what, this was a great match, too. Uh, Cross eventually won with a Springboard cutter into a shooting star press. Matt Cross picks up the victory. Good for a son of heaven. Oh, I mean Matt Cross. This was a surf and turf match.
And there was a Nick Aldis promo. That is what it was. Uh, the Pope came out with Eddie King with uh, Eddie Kings yeah Eddie Kingston. Uh, how you can't speak bad. And the Pope brings up the other two local tag team guys. I forget what their names are though. But then out of the stands, you have the bouncer. You have the Beer City Bruiser shows up, and the other guy. I just noticed the Beer City Bruiser. Again, just seeing the Beer City Bruiser in the ring was enough. There was a bra in the ring. And then we had a May Valentine promo. <laughs> Someone has to tell Miss Valentine to, to lay off the, the nose powder when she's doing these interviews. Because she's just like, yeah, and speaks like this. It's either that or she had way too much Botox because her eyes were so big and talking so deliberately, man. And this is my diary, man. Oh, enough about that. But yeah, she looks like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm good to go now. Again, just those glazed over eyes. I've seen that before in Melissa Santos. Being a twitch during those breaks. That's all I'll say though. Pure innuendo. Maybe. Actually, I wonder if she didn't I forget if she announced the one match from Impact. I forget. That's okay, then uh we get back to the wrestling. We have Trevor Murdoch taking on Aaron Strong. This is uh, Trevor Murdoch's an old school NWA seventies wrestler. So many body slams. That's his move. Body slam. What is you punch, elbow, body slam? That's that's all he needs. That's all they used to do in the old days. Punch, elbow, body slam. Every so often, pile driver. He needs to perfect the pile driver. Then he's perfect. Perfect 70s wrestlers. The question mark, again, is there. But he jumps on the ringside. But the referee says, I'm not having any of this shenanigans. You question mark. You're out of here. Again, by the way, if you if you would like to get out of here by the referee, you can always like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, anyone that does that, and if I see your name, you actually get your video shout out. I haven't had to give video shout outs for a while. Indeed. Uh, the shooter, again, does a baseball slide. And then he just beats Trevor Murdoch out, outside. For some reason, he's, tr he's trying to just get the count out victory. Again, he low, low bridge on Trevor Murdoch, the double axe handle, and the Mongrovian lariat. Mongrovian karate! Let's be the Mongrovian karate chop. Yeah, this was actually pretty good, though. This was, it was, it just seemed like something from the past. But unfortunately, oh. And there was just some punches. Nice fall away slam outside the ring, but it was a time limit draw. And after the time limit draw, yeah, Trevor Murdoch got, got his own one, two, three. The time limit draw is when it's only 10 minutes. Yeah, it was okay. I mean, they didn't do anything spectacular. I could have had that match really. That's a ham sandwich of a match. And then we have the new beer money of Eli Drake and James Storm taking on Josephus and Mims. Josephus is the poor man's bruiser Brody in case, and Mims is just, I hate to say it, but average black beater wrestler. Uh, for the most part, it was a classic wrestling match that didn't last too long. Again, the double team by the new beer money was great. Eli Drake hits that picture perfect elbow. The fireman's carry into, into the backcracker. A fairly easy win for the new tag team champions. The new beer money wins. Again, I probably could have had this match. Therefore, it's a ham sandwich. Then we have a rematch. Allison Cave taking on Thunder Rosa. La Mera Mera. And it was a great match. Um, Melina was ringside of the commentators. Melina. 
You have to cover up a bit more. They're coming out of your outfit. The top. Wade Barrett staring at you. I'm staring at you. And who knows who else is staring at you? I should look that up. That's, that's good research for some other time. For the most part, it was standing switches, classic wrestling. Thunder Rosa goes after the arm that she initially injured. This had, this match had that fight feel without being a shoot. It didn't. It, the, neither wrestler said, oh, you want to shoot? No. It had that fight feel without being a shoot. Uh, Thunder Rosa went for the Fujiwara arm bar and then kind of the uh, brutalizer thing almost. And they traded blows, Bouye, then became a hockey fight. The double boots by Allison K. tried the schoolgirl roll up. And then Thunder Rosa just went all oh, super combo. She hit in order a wheelbarrow stunner, German suplex, and thunderstruck Death Valley driver. And, and I mean, she beat her with all of the signature moves. And then she does like a schoolgirl school takedown and just a schoolgirl stack. Um, Marty Bella shows up, confuses everyone. It's like people stare at her for like five minutes. I don't know if she was confused or just doing stuff back in in the back with May Valentine. Yeah. And then uh, Vox came out, so did Steel. So numbers are evened up. Again, Marty Bell just looks confused out there. She confuses everyone. No one knows what's going on. Again, if she was back there with Faye Valentine doing talking, gossiping on cell phones, doing whatever. Women doing locker rooms. Ooh. They need to make a video of that. But again, uh, Thunder Rosa retains her championship. She actually has to face eventually Melina, because Melina said she wants to try that belt. This was actually a really fun match, though. This was another surf and turf match. And that was NWA Power. And that's only because they have multiple R's at the back. Hopefully, WooTube gets fixed for tomorrow's SmackDown. But NWA Power, that was a good cheeseburger of a show. I almost want to say EEW was a surf and shirt was... It was like a mild surf. It was like a crab cake, mock tender steak surf and turf. Again, the women's match was eh. Joey Janela kept saving the match. That was better. It was a cheeseburger. So overall, AEW was a surf and turf show. And then a little bit about my crazy schedule. Um, so Saturday, so Friday, I'll be hopefully doing my normal SmackDown show. Say hopefully, because I hope YouTube, I hope YouTube's back. And I think it's just one of those like deals once a month. Uh, there's no wrestling Saturday or Sunday. Monday, I will be back for a Raw. Tuesday, there's going to be no impact. Wednesday, there's going to be no AEW because I have to work. I might sneak in a quick NWA show, though. Either the 13th or 14th because the 14th is Val. Oh, God, no. The 14th Valentine's Day. I hate Valentine's Day. Oh. I will have my. This one goes out to all the ladies special, though, like I always do. On the 14th, either 13th or 14th. I have to figure the logistics of that out yet. The 14th, I probably might make a SmackDown video. Again, depends on MooTube and what happens with me. And that's next week's schedule. Good. I'd like to thank everyone for.